the audience. Greetings. Today's topic is really important, which is bloodshed and violence in the Quran. And today we'll discuss on false translations of verse 67 of Surah Al-Anfal chapter 8. And we'll also compare the verse number 1 of Surah Al-Asra chapter 17 with reference to the word Asra, which is coming in both verses of the Quran, but translated differently to hide the actual message of the Quran and to insert the false beliefs in the translations and expositions of the Quran. Someone has sent me the translations of verse 67 of Surah Al-Anfal chapter 8 and asked me this question through a Quranic group if this verse is really saying what is given in its translations, especially by award-winning Grand Mufti of Pakistan, Mr. Tekio's money and other translators. of Surah Al-Anfal, Chapter 8. مَا كَانَ لِنَبِيٍ أَنْ يَكُونَ لَهُ أَسْرًا حَتَّى يُسْخِنَ فِي الْأَرْضِ تُرِيدُونَ عَرَضَ الدُّنْيَا وَاللَّهُ يُرِيدُ الْآخِرَةَ وَاللَّهُ عَزِيزٌ حَكِيمٌ An award-winning, the Grand Mufti, he's saying in his translation that it is not befitting a prophet that he has captives with him unless he has subdued it, the enemy by shedding blood in the land. You intend to have the stuff of this world while Allah intends the hereafter for you. And Allah is almighty, all wise. So this is the translation of Grand Mufti of Pakistan, which can be seen on their website, QuranUnlocked.com. The person concerned with the false translations of this Quranic verse further said, that is there anyone in this group who can explain this verse? He highlighted again and again that this translation is given by the Grand Mufti of Pakistan. He added that almost all translators of the Quran have done the same translation of crush it, kill it, cut and bleed. Shocked by the false translations of this Quranic verse, the sad person further asked, that is this really what this verse is saying. He said, does gold have a vampire form? Is there anyone who can clean this dust? The short and common sense answer is that the Quran doesn't say anything immoral or dehumanizing and doesn't encourage murder, bloodshed, violence and oppression. As for cleaning the dust on the translations of the Quran, you can do this yourself instead of depending on anyone, including myself. All you have to do is to compare the words in the Arabic text of the Quran with their translations. You do not need to be proficient in Arabic language for this work, but only a working knowledge of Arabic language is enough. For example, you will need to see this Arabic text. And find which Arabic word means subdue the enemy by shedding blood or to kill or crush people. In the same way, compare other words of this verse one by one. And bear in mind that what is written in the brackets in the interpretations and translations of the Quran is only to maintain the flow of false translations and fake interpretations. So there's absolutely no need to pay any attention to it. Apart from this, 
if you put religious teachings and prevailing beliefs aside and try to understand the Quran only from its words that appear in the Arabic text of the Quran, then you will be able to understand the Quran without any difficulty. Let's study the words coming in verse 67 of Surah Al-Anfal, chapter 8 of the Quran and see the correct translation of this Quranic verse. In the phrase, Ma kana li nabiyin, article Ma, which I've already discussed in so many articles, that if Ma comes before the past verb, in most cases it is negative. That is Ma al-Nafiyah. The word kana, actually the past tense of kun, which means made, happened, or instituted. The same word kana is taken as a linking verb. In some sentences, according to the need, to mean was, as a past of be, like be was been. Then the Nabiyin is a compound, right? So you have to look in this compound so many things. First is preposition li in the beginning, which is used to mean two in order to and four. Tanveen singles the word out to mean a prophet or any prophet, a Nabi or any Nabi. So this Tanveen, two dashes like sign marker, yin in the end of ya of Nabiyin, singles it out, the Prophet and Nabi. So the correct translation of Makan and Nabiyin will become, it was not made for any Prophet or it did not happen for any Prophet. Either any or a, you have to use with Prophet because of Tanmin. So it wasn't made for a Prophet or it didn't happen for any Prophet. Either you can say it didn't happen for any Prophet or you can say it wasn't made for any Prophet. The next article is conjunction an in anyakuna. That means simply that. Whereas yakuna is the objective and passive state of the present verb of kana. It's coming from kun anyway. So it's passive. Yakuna is passive in present. Now we're coming to lahu. This is preposition and who. Objective or possessive pronoun. Who. You know sound is who. Is going directly to the subject. And subject is Nabi. Right? So that means lahu. Refers to Nabi. Makana Nabi. Refers back to Nabi. Who is Nabi. Which is coming in the subject. So lahu is for him. Right? The next word. Asra. Refers to those who are imprisoned by someone or something. If someone is imprisoned by thoughts, by views and by religion, by someone's devotion, by someone's personality, by someone's magic, by someone's teachings, by someone's views, by someone's thoughts, and also by someone's physical imprisonment. So any, any, anything, imprisoned by anything is asra. So asra, imprisoned by anything or imprisoned by person. When you take asra as a plural word, asra is broken plural or irregular plural in Arabic language. But in reality, Asra is elative noun or superlative adjective or gerund because of ya in the end. When ya comes in the end, it works as gerund, like ing form in English. So asra, same time, broken plural, elative noun, superlative adjective and gerund. So it can refer to captives, prisoners and imprisonment and captivity as well. It can refer to imprisoned by someone, imprisoned by something, someone's captives, someone's slaves, and someone's obedient or obeys those who obey someone. But at the same time, the same word, asra, also refers to captivity, imprisonment, slavery, and obedience. This is because the word asra is elative noun, superlative adjective, and gerund at the same time. The details of making and use of elective nouns, superlative adjectives, and gerunds is available on my LinkedIn profile and on some YouTube lectures. So now you can see the dishonesty of our scholars, translators and muftis, which is revealed to us through the translations of the same word Asra in different verses of the Quran to bring the violence and bloodshed in the Quran with reference to imprisonment. They translate the same word Asra to mean captives in verse 67 of Surah Al-Anfal, chapter 8 of the Quran, which we are studying now. But in order to distort the statement of the Quran, these devils fabricate the same Quranic word Asra in the translations of verse number 1 of Surah Al-Asra, chapter 17, 1, 7, to mean carried, took, traveled, journey and migration to invent the false story of ascension or mirage of the Prophet.
gone to twilight the blessings of the worship of their house of idols, Al-Masjid Al-Haram, the Forbidden Mosque. And at the same time, they wanted to invent the event of Miraj, the ascension of the Prophet. That's why they took the same word, Asra, to mean carried, took, travel, journey and migration. In first verse of Surah Al-Asra, in the translations of verse number 1 of Surah Al-Asra, number 17, which is Subhanallazi Yasra bi'abdihi laylam min al-masjid al-harami al-masjid al-aqsa. It is fabricated, but glory to Allah, who did take his servant for a journey by night from the sacred mosque to the farthest mosque. Or glorified be he who carried his servant by night from al-masjid al-haram to al-masjid al-aqsa. Or glory to Allah who took his servant from al-masjid al-haram to al-masjid al-aqsa at night. And then in the exegesis or in the commentary, they say that this journey was the ascension or mirage of the Prophet to seven skies where five prayers a day were given to the Prophet and its nation. So they deliberately took false meaning of the word Asra to impose on us five times daily prayers and purposely destroyed the actual message of Quranic verse 1 of Surah Al-Asra chapter 17. They invented that the Prophet made his journey to the heavens and as a result of this journey the five daily prayers were obtained which are obligatory upon all of us. Therefore if we believe the translations of verse 1 of Surah Al-Asra chapter 17. Subhanallah asra bi abdi laylam min al-masjid al-harami ila al-masjid al-aqsa to be correct. And if we take the Arabic word asra in this verse to mean took, travel, carried, migration and ascension of the Prophet, then the same word asra in the verse 67 of Surah Al-Anfal chapter 8 ma kana li nabiyin an yakuna lahu asra will mean no prophet was traveled, or no prophet was taken to the ascension, or no prophet was taken, or carried, or traveled to Miraj, or no prophet was taken, carried, or traveled from Al Masjid Al Haram to Al Masjid Al Aqsa. So they are proven false, and the translations are automatically proven false. You can see now as to how this translation is coming. An agreed translation of the phrase Ma kana li nabiyin is that it is not made for a prophet, or not made for a prophet, right? Then, ayakuna lahu means that to make for him or that to be for him. So, if we take the same meaning of this chronic word asra to mean travel, migration, ascension or mirage, here in the verse 67 of Surah Al-Anfal chapter 8, which our scholars take in verse number 1 of Surah Al-Asra chapter 17, then the translations of Ma kana li nabiyin ayakuna lahu asra of verse 67 of Surah Al-Anfal chapter 8 will be no prophet was made to travel or travel, migration, mirage or ascension was not made for a prophet. Choice is yours. Whichever or whatever meanings of these Quranic verses you want to take out of false meanings given by your scholars or true meanings which you have found for yourselves in the word for word correct translation and in the word for word correct analysis of these Quranic verses. In the same way, the whole Quran is falsely translated and false is published and preached in the name of the Quran on all platforms including YouTube channels, magazines, Quran teaching websites, Quranic blogs and in radio and television programs. Where are those so-called intellectuals who claim to interpret the Quran with the Quran? And where are those Quranist scholars who are the so-called proclaimers and flag carriers of Tashrif Ayat? which is a false practice of taking the same meaning of Quranic words all over the Quran, wherever they appear in the Quran, without taking into account their context. They choose every single word in the Quran and take the same meaning of Quranic words everywhere in order to fabricate the false interpretation of the Quran and insist on taking the same meaning in every verse. But they still don't understand the Quran. Neither their followers understand the Quran. They don't understand the Quran. If they take the same meaning of Quranic words everywhere, the question arises as to what was the reason of not taking the same meaning of Quranic word Asra in these two Quranic verses. This is quite obvious that the proclaimers of taking the same meaning of Quranic words wanted to hide something in the translations of these two verses. That's why they did not take the same meaning of Quranic word Asra in the translation of these two Quranic verses because they wanted to hide the statement of the Quran. They wanted to hide the actual message of the Quran in the translations of these two verses. In these two verses of the Quran, don't these Quran scholars see the same word Asra? Also, 
In the translations of the first verse of Surah Al-Asra, chapter 17, Subhanal Lazi Yasra bi Abdihi Laylam min al Masjid al Harami ila al Masjid al Aqsa. They changed the Quranic word Subhan to the similar Persian word Subhan and translate the Quranic word Subhan to mean glory. This is because glory or glorified is the meaning of the Persian word Subhan, which is used in Persian language as a praising word or someone's praising adjective. But the Arabic word Subhan is made by adding an, alif and noon, an to the end of Arabic word Subh. Seen ba ha, derived from Arabic root letters, seen ba and ha. Since the Persian word Subhan, which is used in Persian language, is called adjective by Persian grammarians, likewise Persian grammarians of the Quran declare that Quranic word Subhan is also an adjective. But actually, Arabic or Quranic word Subhan is a doer or one who does or an adjective of doer. Like the Arabic word Rahim, grieved from the word Rahim, is an adjective, meaning one who has mercy or kindness. But when Rahman is made by adding Alif and Noon on at the end of the verb of Rahim, Rahman actually becomes the doer, like Falan from Fel or on the weight of Falan from Fel, which means who does kindness or who shows mercy. In the same way, the Arabic word Subhan is made that is a combination of Subh and An. Moreover, a round voice of Subhan or a comma-like marker, lamma, on Arabic letter seen of Subhan is nothing but a way to make Subhan a nominative which refers to the subject or makes Subhan active participle or subject or doer who takes the action of the verb Subha. Therefore, instead of taking the Arabic word Subhan in the meanings which we have heard from our religious scholars or their like-minded Quranist scholars, we should look up the correct meaning of Arabic word sub made with seen ba ha in any reputable dictionary of Arabic language. The word subhan of the Quran is derived from Arabic root word subha, seen ba ha, which is used in Arabic language to mean float, swim, and cause to move. Whereas the verb of the same Arabic word subha is used in Arabic language to mean bear up, carry on, manage, and deal with the situation. When Alif Noon An is added to this verb, it becomes Subhan to mean doer of the verb of Subha or a verbal noun of Subha to mean causing to move, managing, bearing up, dealing with the situation. And one who moves, one who carries on, one who manages and one who deals with the situation respectively. The letters Alif and Noon An can be added to any verb to make it an adjective Subha of someone who is a doer and one who does and also acts as a verbal noun. So when Alif Noon An is added to the verb of Rahim on the weight of Falan, Rahim becomes Rahman, meaning one who shows mercy or one who does kindness. Moreover, in Arabic language, the Arabic word Al Majid is used to mean glory and Arabic adjective Al Majid is used to mean glorious or glorified since our childhood. We have been saying the same Arabic word Majid in the form of its adjective Majid, which is usually written with the Quran as Quran Majid, means glorious Quran. But we still understand the Quran with the false meanings given by our so called scholars. Is this not their hypocrisy or dishonesty? Yes, this is because they invent things in the false translations of the Quran according to their religious belief. 
actually in the first verse of Surah Al-Asra chapter 17. Subhan al-lazi yasra bi'abdihi laylam min al-masjid al-haram. It is said, it is he who removed through his obedient the captivity of ignorance of al-masjid al-haram. There, yeah? Subhan means mover. Subhan, mover, remover. Al-lazi, who moves, who removes. Al-lazi yasra. That is the captivity, captivity, imprisonment. Bi'abdihi, what is obedient? Laylam. So Laylam is the word which denotes ignorance and darkness in al-Masjid al-Haram, of Masjid al-Haram, the forbidden mosque. removed the prisoners of darkness of Masjid al-Haram with his obedient. So Allah moved people out of the darkness of al-Masjid al-Haram with his obedient. That's what the first verse of Surah Al-Asra chapter 17 is saying, Subhanallah al-Asra abdihi layla min al-Masjid al-Haram. So the dark captivity or imprisonment of the captives or prisoners of al-Masjid al-Haram described in the first verse of Surah Al-Asra was what? The religion of Al-Masjid Al-Haram had imposed on people by trapping them in its deception. This is the same captivity or imprisonment that the descendants of the infidels and polytheists have subsequently imposed on us in the form of religion of Islam. If you pay your attention, you will see that in fact, the first verse of Surah Al-Asra is rooting out the religious ignorance and darkness by ending the dark age of religion of Al-Masjid Al-Haram and by ending the dark religion of Al-Masjid Al-Haram. The word Laylan in the first verse of Surah Al-Asra, chapter 17 of the Quran is important in this verse, which describes the same ignorance and darkness of Al-Masjid Al-Haram, which was ended by the exalted obedient of Allah, by doing a great favor to the captives of Al-Masjid Al-Haram, by taking them out of the prison of this forbidden mosque and putting them on the right path of Allah. For more details on Quranic verse 1 of Surah Al-Isra chapter 17, please see my article on LinkedIn on this verse. Anyway, the person who is putting his life on the line and putting his business and all luxuries aside is sincerely trying to get you out of the captivity or imprisonment of Al-Masjid Al-Haram through correct Quranic teachings. Your Islamic State of Pakistan has blocked the way for the correct message of the Quran to reach you by closing his Quran Guide YouTube channel. But the message of the Quran has never stopped and cannot be stopped by anyone. Those who still want to watch the Quran Guide YouTube channel in Pakistan should go to YouTube settings and change their country from Pakistan to United States, United Kingdom or Canada, etc. Then you can watch every YouTube video of our channel which is banned by the current government of Pakistan. To go to YouTube settings, click on the YouTube icon in the upper right corner. Click on General, click on Location, change the country to US, UK or Canada. That's it. This way, you can watch blocked YouTube channel in Pakistan. Further to the bloodshed and violence in the false translations of the Quran, we are going to resume the same topic from the word Asra of Quranic verse 67 of Surah Al-Fal, chapter 8. مَا كَانَ لِنَبِيٍ أَنْ يَكُونَ لَهُ أَسْرَى حَتَّى يُسْخِنَ فِي الْأَرْضِ تُرِيدُونَ عَلَى الدُّنْيَا وَاللَّهُ يُرِيدُ الْآخِرَةَ وَاللَّهُ عَزِيزٌ حَكِيمٌ In this verse, the words مَا كَانَ لِنَبِيٍ أَنْ يَكُونَ لَهُ أَسْرَى literally means it was not made for a prophet to have captives, slaves or obeyers for him. It becomes clear from these words of the Quran that no prophet will be obeyed. In other words, there will be no obedience to any prophet or there will be no obedience to any person including prophet. Obedience of individual including prophet is not allowed in the Quran. Quran puts ban on obedience of individual. In the verse 34 of Surah Al-Mu'minun chapter 23, the Quran urges us not to obey any person. Quran stops personal obedience. Quran stops obeying people. Quran stops obeying persons. No personal obedience. Obedience will be only to Allah, to God and his message. The Quran says no personal obedience of anyone. You will have to obey Allah and his message only. Verse 64 of Surah Al-Nisa chapter 4 says our message is only for the obedience of Allah's order. It is only to obey Allah's order. In so many verses, the Quran orders us to obey only God and the message of God. 
For more details on obedience, please read my articles on Rasool on LinkedIn or watch my YouTube videos on Rasool. In the next phrase, Hatta yuskhina fil ard. Hatta is an adverb and conjunction. Hatta is used to mean voiced, voil, even, so that, so as. So in the phrase, Hatta yuskhina fil ard, the word Hatta is coming to mean even and voiced. Voil, the word yuskhin, in the nominative form, refers to the thickening of the subject. When a thing grows, it becomes thickened and it not only becomes big, fat and tall, but also its feet becomes firm, its roots become strong and overall it becomes powerful. So the Arabic root word sukhan means thicken, tighten, dense, firm, solid, strong and powerful. Therefore, derived from the Arabic root word sukhan, the correct meaning of yuskhin, or also the same, to be thick, to be fat, to be solid, to be firm, to be strong, to be stable, and to become powerful. The same or similar meaning of Arabic word sukhan can be seen on page number 332 of PDF, book number 1 of Edward William Lane's Arabic lexicon. Moreover, since yushin is nominative in its voice, therefore yushin is talking about the power, strength, and firmness of its subject, which is prophet, coming in the beginning of this verse. Therefore, in accordance with the law of language, the meaning of Yuskin will not be applied to the prisoners or captives, but to the Prophet only. After that, Arabic preposition fi is coming to mean in. Then al ard is coming to mean the ard, the land. So fil ard means in the ard, in the land. Therefore, the correct translation of words ma kana li nabiyin an yakuna lahu asra hatta yuskhina fil ard is coming to mean it wasn't made for a prophet to have captives for him whilst having power in the land. It wasn't made for a prophet to have captives for him even having power in the land. So the correct translation is coming. It wasn't made for a prophet to have captives for him even having power in the land, even having strength in the land, whilst having power in the land. What does it mean? It means any type of imprisonment is not allowed. It is simple. It wasn't made for a prophet to have captives for him, even having power in the land. What is the difference between land and world? World is overall world. Land is the division of the world. Like this is England, right? England, Thailand, Holland. There's so many lands. So land is a division in the world. It's territory, it's area, it's country, it's division. Like we can say homeland. So it's in own area. Is someone's own area. So land is someone's own area, like territory or area or boundary. Someone have his own boundary. So land is certain area in the world where someone rules, someone have power, someone have strength in any area. So a prophet cannot capture, cannot make his prison or make his captives in the area. So literally means it wasn't made for a prophet. To have captives for him, whilst having power in the land, even having strength in the land. It simply means that it was not made for a prophet to have prisoners, captives, slaves, or bears, or obeying people for him, so as to become powerful, strong, or firm in the earth, in the land. Yeah? It is what the Quran is saying in its own words that I have explained to you. But in the translations of these words of the Quran, the devils who fabricated the false translations of the Quran are talking about crushing, killing, and beating the enemies to cause bloodshed in the world in the name of Allah and the Prophet of Allah. The roids, bloodshed, and killings happening in Pakistan. Neither the politicians nor the army journals are to be blamed, but this is the fault of our religious leaders who taught the whole nation through the false translations of the Quran that the Quran orders looting, killing, and bloodshed. When our official award-winning scholars will make false statements of the Quran that the Prophet imprisoned people and killed them, or the Prophet committed bloodshed on the prisoners following the orders of Allah, if the Prophet continued to kill and crush prisoners, our rulers will also do the same following the commandments of Allah and Sunnah or practice of the Prophet. Does the blasphemy law not apply to the devils for insulting the Prophet, who described in the false translations of the Quran? that the Prophet was causing bloodshed, crushing and killing. In fact, the insolent of the Prophet are the translators, religious scholars and muftis who, while insulting the Prophet openly, call the Prophet an uneducated and bloodthirsty murderer. 
But unfortunately, because of the fear of religion, no one catches them and no one dares to speak against them. The next clause, of verse 67 of Surah Al Anfal, chapter 8, that we are studying. The next words, Turiduna, is a sound plural compound of second person plural of present tense to mean you want, in which everyone is being addressed directly and it is being said that you want. Aladat dunya, aladat dunya is worldly expression. If you visit any shopping center in Arabic countries, you will find ard khas written or displayed on sign boards in shops. That means special offer. So, ard means offer, exposure, display, and show. Yeah, you want show of the world. You want exposure of the world. Ard dunya, offering of the world. So, the practical use of the same Quranic word ard can be seen in the shopping centers of Arabic countries where they display ard khas, special offer, on the sign boards to attract customers by giving them a big incentive of special offer. Then the next clause, Wallahu yuridul akhira is coming to mean and God wants your hereafter, in which you read again is nominative in its sound, which is talking with the reference to the subject coming in Turiduna in the previous clause. One thing you can note, you can see in the word for word correct translation that no words will be less or more, no brackets will be used and the most accurate translation of the Quran will come to you completely and clearly. In the last stanza of this Quranic verse 67 of Surah Al-Anfal chapter 8 that we are studying is Wallahu Aziz and Hakim. Normally they translate Allah is the most voice but this is not true translation, but they say Allah is the most voice. This is because the Arabic word Hakim cannot be translated as voice. Whereas Persian word Hakim is called voice. The Arabic word Hakim, which is used in the Quran, is actually derived from the Arabic root word Hukm. Ha, Kaf, Mim. Ha, Kaf, Mim. Hukm. And it's made just like we make Rahim from Rahim. We make Alim from Ilm. We make Kareem from Karam. Likewise, we make Hakim from Hukm, from Arabic word Hukm, which is a voice. But Hukm is order, is judgment, is fatwa, rule. And Hakim is ruler, authority, the one who orders. Yeah. In the same way, the Quranic word Aziz, which comes before Hakim, is also distorted in the translations of the Quran due to their religious beliefs. Because in order to make people inefficient and lazy, the religion says that honor and humiliation are only with Allah. He honors whomever he wills and he humiliates whomever he wills. They falsely translate. Whereas the Quran doesn't say this, but the Quran exhorts action and promises to attain a higher position in one's present and future life by one's actions, which is in accordance with Allah's justice. What kind of justice is this? That without doing anything, Allah honors someone and makes someone sit in the sky and humiliates or disgraces someone. Allah never does this because it is against the universal laws of Allah. The correct meaning of the Quranic word Aziz can be seen in my research article written on the words coming in the verse 26 of Surah Al-Imran. You can study the article to understand the correct meaning of So, the correct meaning of the Arabic adjective Aziz is power, powerful, strong and cherished. So, who has power is Aziz. Who is cherished is Aziz. And who is strong is Aziz. They usually say Aziz a missile. So, what is Aziz a missile? Is it honor of a missile? No, it's the strength of missile. When someone says, I become prime minister, I become president, or I become a king or something. So what they say? They say, when I become in power. Yeah. Politicians usually say in their speech that when I'll become in power. So when I will become in power? When I become ruler? When I become king? When I'll become prime minister? When I become president? That means when I'll become in power. So Aziz a missile is a power. Is a strength of missile. It's a power of missile. So in Arabic culture, in Arabic language, and in Arabic literature, Aziz mean power, strength, and also cherished. The Quran uses the same word in the same meaning. So Aziz is a powerful. Now we are coming to word for word correct translation of verse 67 of Surah Al-Anfal, chapter 8. مَا كَانَ لِنَبِيٍ أَنْ يَكُونَ لَهُ أَسْرَى حَتَّى يُسْقِنَ فِي الْأَرْضِ تُرِيدُونَ 
آل ادر دنیا واللہ یرید الاخرت واللہ عزیز الحکیم To mean it wasn't made for a prophet to have captives for him, whilst having power in the land. You want worldly exposure, and God wants you hereafter. And God is a powerful ruling authority. So the correct translation is coming to mean it wasn't made for a prophet to have captives for him, whilst having power in the land. You want worldly exposure, and Allah wants you hereafter. And Allah. is a powerful ruling authority. This is the word for word correct translation of Quranic verse 67 of Surah Al-Anfal chapter 8 which I've honestly presented to you. There's not a single word in the Arabic text of verse 67 of Surah Al-Anfal chapter 8 of the Quran which our extremist religious scholars have taken to mean bloodshed, crushing people, killing, looting and beating enemies. In the false translations of this verse they blame Allah and the Prophet of Allah. In the false translations of this verse, they insulted Allah and the Prophet of Allah and declared it as a command of Allah and an act of the Prophet. As usual, once again, I challenge the whole world that all the muftis, all scholars of the Quran and all Arabic scholars together prove my translation wrong. Otherwise, destroy the false interpretations and fake translations of the Quran and stop misleading people in the name of the Quran. See you in the next video. Thanks ever so much.